Japanese role-playing games are one of the most wonderful genres in gaming, but I'll be the first to admit that they can be tough to get into. Sometimes the openings are too long, the gameplay is hard to understand, or the plot is just really weird. Well, in today's video, my friend Miss Bubbles and I are looking to remedy that by sharing JRPGs that are perfect for beginners. She's fairly new to JRPGs herself, so I figured who better to bring in. There will be five games in this video, and part two of the video will be on her channel, which you can find in the pinned comment below. For now, let's start with the first game, Pokemon. I've said it over and over again that Pokemon is the perfect JRPG to start with. Heck, a lot of you watching have probably played a Pokemon game, but didn't even know it was a JRPG or even what a JRPG is. But which Pokemon game specifically? I always say whatever the newest non-remake game is, mainly because it will likely look the best and have the best quality of life features. As of the time of this recording, that would be Pokemon Sword and Shield. This was the first mainline non-remake Pokemon built from the ground up for a home console, and personally, I think it looks great. It has a nice anime art style with tons of charm. One of my favorite parts of the game was constantly changing my character's outfits. Every town has different outfits you can buy, and it was so much fun trying new clothes on to see what looked the coolest. I think something else that makes Pokemon very beginner-friendly is that it does a great job of guiding the player where to go next. RPGs can be quite big with lots to see and do, which can be intimidating for newcomers. But with Pokemon, the objective is always clear, and you're not likely to get lost or confused. Of course, we can't forget the main draw of the series, the Pokemon. It's so fun collecting them, trying to create your ultimate team. Are you trying to build the strongest team, stick with one element type, or play like me and just stick with whichever ones look the coolest? Whatever your goal is, that's the beauty of Pokemon. It's so incredibly flexible. The combat itself is also fairly easy to understand and not that difficult. It's continued to stay true to its turn-based roots where you typically try to attack the enemy with an attack that they're weak to. Whether you like to explore, collect Pokemon, or something else entirely, Pokemon Sword and Shield are the perfect entry point JRPGs. Hello friends of the gaming shelf, I'm Stephanie aka Miss Bubbles and I cover reviews before you buy, sales and so much more on my channel so if you're interested check it out for some bubbly content. Let's talk about a game that literally took my life away for a freaking month and that game is Genshin Impact. I swear to god I still cannot believe how hooked I was on this one. I did not want to sleep, eat, drink or play anything but this. It was not healthy but now I'm a few months sober from this so everything is okay. To be honest, I never thought I would ever enjoy an online game. Back when I started playing Genshin, I used to avoid online multiplayer games because I usually play because I want to avoid humans and not play with humans. <laughs> the world is absolutely gorgeous. I cannot believe that a free game can be that beautiful. It is vibrant, lush, with so many towns and cities that are so lively, with a lot of stores to buy from and explore. So you start by choosing to play as either the brother or a sister and chaos happens when you get stuck while hopping between dimensions. Eventually, you will meet up with a girl called Paimon and she will guide you through the entire game and she is one of the cutest characters that I've ever met. I just want to squish her cheeks. Slowly, you will meet more characters and you will add them to your party. Combat is in a live action style, which is always a welcome feature for me. You can kill enemies to unlock chests around the world, enter dungeons and kill more to get resources or go through trials and see how far you can progress. You can have up to four members in your party and can switch between them at any time to use their unique abilities. Enemies do have their own weak points and once you discover them, you can use elemental abilities from your party members to have the upper hand in battle. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room though, and that is the gotcha system. Now you can do what I did and buy the battle pass, which was for me a way to say thank you to the developers for making such an excellent game, and that will give you more daily money to spend and books to use to level up your weapons and characters. There's also a wish system that will let you unlock more unique party members. For me, I got what I would like to call the Barbara curse. I pulled a wish over eight times and I kept getting her and I started to hate her so freaking much. But you get the trend here. You can obtain everything for free if you want to become a full-time employee playing this game all day long or make things a little bit easier for yourself by investing some cash into it. Now, eventually, I just stopped playing the game because it just became too much. Leveling up characters and their weapons just required so many books and so many difficult to get materials and it no longer felt like an escape for me but more like a chore. But I know that since then 
a lot of patches have been out so I don't know when I'll hop back into the game but I'm kind of scared because I know that I will get addicted to it again. So if you are new to JRPGs, definitely, definitely check out Genshin Impact. Cosmic Star Heroine might not be the first game people think of for beginner JRPGs, but I think it's a great choice for a few reasons. The first being that it can serve as a gateway game to other classic JRPGs. The genre is one steeped in nostalgia with so many all-time greats sporting a pixel art style. If you're able to make it through Cosmic Star Heroine and enjoy its wonderful pixel art, then boy, are there a ton of great games waiting for you on the other side. The game also has a very interesting twist on turn-based combat. When battles begin, each character has a set amount of abilities. The catch is that you can only use them once per battle until you're able to refresh them. This gets you thinking about combat in strategic and fun ways. There's also no grinding in Cosmic Star Heroine as each area only has a set number of enemies and the bosses are all balanced accordingly. For the uninitiated, grinding is when you fight enemies over and over to level up your characters. This is another thing JRPGs are infamous for, but thankfully you won't have to deal with that here in Cosmic Star Heroine. And one last thing, it's really short. Depending on how many side quests you do, you're probably only looking at around 8 to 10 hours to finish it. This is great for new JRPG players as you're able to take in the full experience of what a JRPG is like without having to play a 40 plus hour game. Cosmic Star Heroine is a game I always love recommending and great for players new to Japanese role playing games. Monster Hunter Stories 2, in my opinion, is a gem that not enough people are talking about. It was recently released on PC and Nintendo Switch, and I just could not shut up about it for a really long time. The thing that made me so happy is the fact that it just had all elements that make a game a good one in my book. The story is very intriguing, and I won't get much into it because it will be spoilery, but basically you are the granddaughter slash grandson of a legendary Monster writer, and the world is undergoing a strange change where Rathalos are leaving. Now here, unlike other Monster Hunter entries, you are not going around to search for monsters and hunt them down, but rather you go ahead and find rare monsters that you can ride and they're actually called Monsties. The world is open, areas are different, flora are found everywhere, the village is very lively, and I can keep going on about how great this game is. Combat is turn-based and this might surprise you since I always say that I do not like this style. <laughs> this was shockingly easy to get into. I will admit though at one point I was getting my butt kicked and I will say that it was my fault at some point because I was simply not following the rules. Battles are in the form of rock, paper, scissor but instead of using these elements you use power, technical, and speed. Power beats technical, technical beats speed, and speed beats power. In addition, you can collect monsty eggs and they will hatch into monsties which can guide you in battle as well as give you a leverage while exploring the map. There are a few rules that you kind of need to get accustomed to in order to successfully beat monsters but I promise you, if you don't do like me, you actually read the tutorials and get familiarized with what every monster is going to use against you, you will definitely do well. If I can do it, you can do it. Damn Taylor, I can run a motivational speech right now on your channel. Anyway, you can collect resources, craft items to aid you, get better weapons and armor, go through dungeons and find rare monsties and so much more. So if you are a beginner, this is a massive title, definitely check it out. Final Fantasy VII Remake is not only one of the best JRPGs of the entire generation, but also a great entry point for those new to the genre. Of course, it's one of the best known games in the genre and you've likely heard of it before even if you've never played a JRPG. You'll likely be missing quite a bit of context if you haven't played the original game, but there's a lot of benefits of starting from the remake. For one, the production value is nearly unrivaled. You'd be hard pressed to find another JRPG that looks this good and is this cinematic. 7 Remake also does a wonderful job of building up its characters. Not only is each performance superb, but you learn about their backstories and what motivates them to do what they do. I've played the original Final Fantasy VII countless times and even I was surprised at how much I fell in love with these characters all over again. Seven Remake's combat is also quite flexible. The main idea is that you're trying to whittle down enemies break meters so you can dish out big damage. The default method is with the action style combat where you can just wail away. However, you can slow down the action and get a better lay of the battlefield and plan out your attack. No matter how you like your combat though, you're given plenty of choices. Seven Remake is also quite linear. This is great for someone new to JRPGs because it's pretty hard to get lost and you always know where you're supposed to go next. The music of 7 Remake is maybe the most powerful video game soundtrack I've ever listened to. I'll admit a lot of my love is steeped in nostalgia, but the new arrangements are absolutely brilliant. Whether you've played the original or not, there's no doubt you'll love this music. When it comes right down to it, Final Fantasy 7 Remake isn't just an amazing experience on its own, but might be one of the best games to start your Japanese role-playing adventure with. Now to see the rest of this list, be sure to check out this video right here over on Miss Bubbles' channel.
It was so much fun collabing together for this video and she makes amazing content, so be sure to subscribe to her channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.